On today's episode of Locked on Wild, the state of Minnesota exhales as we get word on the state of Kirill Kaprizov's knee. We'll talk about what was found out in yesterday's MRI today. Hey, this is Matt Boldy, and you're listening to Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. We are your team each and every day, and we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us as we discuss the states of Kirill Kaprizov. Had the MRI yesterday. We'll tell you what the latest is on his status going forward. We'll also take a look at the series of events that led to his injury, as well as talking some trades and looking ahead to a busy week coming up. My name is Seth Topol, host of Lockdown Wilds, credentialed media member and host of the show since 2021. And as mentioned, Alex Micheletti joining us here today. Unfortunately, no victory Micheletti Monday, but the Wild did get a point against Calgary to uh, salvage another five out of six on the road. And it was an interesting game against Calgary, to say the least, because we had all the discussion on uh, Friday about, you know, a there's there's going to be a call up due to emergency circumstances because there, cause there are some question marks in the lineup. But Kirill never entered into my mind as one of those question marks because of the fact. So you have the, you have the injury that happened against Edmonton. Uh, Kagula of, uh, of the Oilers little knee on knee action. But then Kirill came into the game after it happens. Like he was out of the lineup for a little bit. He came back on the ice. And so at that point we were thinking, well, everything's fine. And then he misses the Calgary game the early part of that game was a bit of a mess, but the Wild do rally back to uh, to get it to OT. Can't get it done in a shootout. And um, then everybody exhales because the tweets as the day went on after the Calgary game, I'm not going to lie, I was a little concerned at the uh, at the just hush nature of all of the uh, all the social media coverage. But I am happy to report that, uh, according to Michael Russo, uh, no serious damage um, to Kirill's knee, which is a welcome, uh, welcome sigh of relief for Minnesota Wild fans. Uh, it sounds like he was feeling a lot better, too. And uh, as far as his status for tonight's game against Winnipeg and the rest of the week, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But at least. At least it wasn't the worst case scenario uh, that we were expecting uh, after that news dropped. Yeah, just <laughs> he, he, uh, these Russians are a different breed, aren't they? Right? They just it's yeah. uh, amazing that uh, you know that he was able to to you know to come back into the game. I it just it, it's it's crazy. Uh, you know, I think you know I'm sure he's motivated to try to play Winnipeg too, just because they were another team that. Uh, tried to injure him. Um, so, uh, you know, the, well, they did injure him, but, you know, tried to take him out long term. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it would be so devastating to have him out for so long, right? Um, and yeah. It, the fact that they even got a point against Calgary without him was just, just incredible. It looked, it looked like they were, you know, dead in the, right in the water. Um, and they, they magically got that one to, to overtime and, it seems like this year in overtime, it's really strange. A lot of 
a lot of games are going more to shootouts because yeah. teams are just, you know, I don't know. Uh, they're just holding on to the puck and not, uh, not going for, you know, scoring chances, but uh, yeah, just, just really strange uh, overtime. And then the shootout was crazy. It looked, you know, <laughs> looked like both, both, you know, both teams had a chance to win it. Uh, yeah. So just crazy. And I, I got to, we, we got to talk a little bit about the series of events in that Edmonton game, because mm-hmm. there were some people on X that were really throwing Marcus Foligno under the bus for this notion of like, well, why didn't anybody do anything to come to the defense of Kirill after the, after the injury happened? Well, number one, Middleton tried and Kagula just, he just refused. He straight up refused to fight. And the only reason that Matt Boldy got a couple of punches in is because he physically grabbed him because he was close enough to get a hand on him. But I, and I'm glad I'm uh, that could have been really bad for Matt Boldy too. It looked like it, it could, he could have really gotten hurt on that. Cause Kajula got him, got him pretty good too, but uh, glad Matt Boldy was okay. But like, and then, you know, the, there were some on X that were actually like went and looked and he didn't play at all in the rest of the second period, according to uh, Russo's filter on X, he didn't play the entire rest of the second, pe- of the second period and got three shifts in the third. So unless you're going to like physically go to the, fl- the Edmonton bench and pull a guy off the bench, he wasn't willing to answer for it. And so like, I just, I, I, I don't know in this instance and I like, I'm I'm not saying it's not a problem because it's something that clearly has happened. Think back to Logan Stanley, think back to Ryan Suter. And so it clearly is a thing that other teams are trying to do, but this is one of the instances I think in which like there was a response. You can't do anything though about a guy who just refuses to own up for it. And that was exactly what happened is he refused to fight Middleton. Middleton tried multiple times. He was like, he was practically skating around him for a minute, just straight up refused to fight. And then Matt Boldy just took matters into his own hands, but it's not like nobody did anything. Right. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> what more, what more can you, I mean, seriously, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, you're trying to win that game too. You're not trying to mm-hmm. cause extra penalties too, and especially when you're going up against a team like Edmonton, whose power play is, you know, lethal. Um, that's how they win a lot of their games. So, yeah, just uh, yeah, <laughs> weird, unfortunate series of events. Uh, just a strange way to you know to end the uh, the road trip. Yeah, and the the notion of an eye for an eye. Well, then you're going to get somebody suspended. Like that's, right. that's just, that's just the way that it is. Unless you, unless you put that in your game plan and are like, okay, we gotta, we gotta take such and such player out of the equation. And right. then you get somebody else suspended because they retaliate. Like it, it, there's always going to be the, the retaliation is going to get penalized worse than the actual play every right. time. And, I guess I'm just of the belief that if you're going to do something about that type of play, that type of hit, go beat the team on the ice. I I just, I, I I don't know. Like that was, it was just a weird response. Like, Oh, here we go. While not doing anything about this again, it's like, and, and, and to you, and you bring up a good point. Uh, The it's, you, you can't, you can't just give up, you know, you know, games either. It's going to yeah. be too tight in this division. Uh, and to, to lose more guys, <laughs> they, they don't need to call up any more Iowa guys. No, yeah, we don't need more. We don't need more Devin Shores. You know, we're good with, with what we have. <laughs> yeah. I, so I guess the, the thing to take is that we can all, we can all exhale. We can all breathe. Kirill is, is day to day at this point. But from what Russo said, sounds like he's feeling better, which 
would lead me to believe that he's going to, I will be shocked if he doesn't go through warmups at least to, uh, to kind of see where he's at and hopefully be able to go. Yeah. <laughs> even if you uh, just see him out on war, if he does take warmups, that would be just a, you know, a sigh of relief. Uh, for yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, you can't afford to have him be out weeks like uh, Zagrell. No. You, you absolutely can't. Um, but we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, what we do need to worry about is what is going to happen on the trade front. There have been some trade winds of blowing already. And so we'll, uh, we'll take a look. We'll take stock of the latest rumors and rumblings around the Minnesota Wild on the trade front as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, View live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, we'll have you covered tonight after the game with a Lockdown Wild postcast uh, after uh, hopefully an exciting game against the Winnipeg Jets here this evening. But uh, before we get to that point, Alex, we got to talk some trades because we keep pointing this out. And every time the Wild either win or accumulate points, it feels like it becomes more and more of a key thing. Let's just take stock of where everything's at right now. The Wild have the second most points in the entire Western Conference right now. They have 30 points through 20 games. We've finally hit the quarter pool. We've hit the 20-game mark of this season, and there are a couple of games before Thanksgiving. But the only team that is ahead of the Wild right now is the Winnipeg Jets. The Wild have battled Winnipeg and Dallas close so far this season. And Vegas has 28 points in 21 games. So the Wild have a game in hand on pretty much everybody in the Pacific. It's just feeling more and more like this is a team that is trending towards a playoff spot and therefore should look to do something at the deadline to kind of help further that because Winnipeg and other than that, who, who really scares you in the, in the West other than Winnipeg? Yeah, (laughs) obviously. I mean, Dallas isn't playing great right now, but they can always turn it on. But uh, yeah, yeah, it seems, seems more open than the normal Uh, Colorado will always scare me just with, (laughs) <laughs> with the with the three studs that they have they don't have a goalie but uh they can always try to try to figure that out um yeah the the weird thing or one one name to keep an eye out is john gibson what is anaheim gonna do with him uh, so hopefully <laughs> hopefully they don't trade within another western conference team but anaheim is you know who knows what Anaheim is, is up to. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, this is the, this is a year to, you know, try to make a, a splash and you have, you have all the draft picks. You have, you have so many prospects that, um, that you can, can give up in a trade, especially, I mean, now the D uh, D prospects are kind of getting log jammed um, and, you know, Z Boyum's going to eventually, you know, b- you know, be the first guy out of all those guys that are down in Iowa. Um, well, I saw a projected trade this weekend for the Minnesota wild for one, um, Brock Nelson. 
from the New York Islanders. So that's that's the name that's been linked the most, and for obvious reasons, because he's a Minnesota kid. Um, the Islanders are at this <laughs> point. Nice. At this point, they are in the fifth spot in the uh, Metropolitan Division, and they're t- they're eight, eight, and five. They can't score. They're not going anywhere. They are just, they're rudderless. So it seems likely that, yeah, it seems likely if that continues that they're going to just, they're going to look to make some moves. And Nelson is um, certainly an attractive piece. He's in the last year of his deal, which is also super appealing. So I'm going to hit you with this and just tell me if you would make this trade if you were Bill Guerin. A 2025 first round pick and a conditional 2025 third round pick that according to TSN for Brock Nelson. I do in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, you know, Brock Nelson, we've, we've seen him, you know, he's a fantastic uh, player. He'd be what this team is missing in the top six, a guy uh, that will fire the puck. He'll, I mean, and, uh, he's great on the power play, so he would help out with with that as well. Uh, he's you know he, he's he's a 200 foot player too. He's just like Eck, uh, but I think he has even more offense than than Eck. Um, so yeah, I would I would take him in a heartbeat. Yeah, I I just I think he would bring a little more um, I don't know just a little more offensive mentality to the uh the top six although i say that and marcus johansson against calgary had eight of the team's 23 shots and so the guy that i'm the guy that we're trying to replace in the top six for at least a night against calgary was the furthest from a problem right right that's, and, that's, that's the problem with him you know he wasn't a problem against calgary but he just doesn't do that enough yeah, like he he took his shot total over the last five games and he doubled it in one game. <laughs> um, so here are some of the numbers for Brock Nelson so far this year. He's got eight goals. He's got 13 points in 21 games. He is a 56% in the faceoff circle this year. 56%. He has uh, 64 shots on goal in 21 games. So he's averaging he's averaging about three shots on goal per game, but total shot attempts. He has 112 total shot attempts in 21 games. So he's he's getting four or five shot attempts a night, but he also brings you, you know, he brings you those face off wins in terms of point shares. Uh, He has more point shares defensively this year than he does offensively. But he has already equaled his point shares from last year on defense through the first 21 games of the season. So he doesn't just bring you offense. He can play some defense too. And the only hurdle that you have to worry about is the $6 million uh, price tag. But if you get New York to retain... And maybe if you take somebody on the roster currently and ship them out, it's it's very doable. I think it's very doable. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it would be such a big upgrade, that, you know, that this team has needed for 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 quite a while. And uh, you know, he'd be phenomenal if they were to make the playoffs um, as well. Um, he would definitely, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about him, uh, you know, um, putting up points in the playoffs. And the, there are some that are saying it's a down year for the draft this year. At some point, at some point you just, in my opinion, you just have enough prospects. Like right. you, you just, you can keep adding to a prospect pool, but at some point, it's too full and you look at the top guys in the prospect pool right now are all expected. Like the top six prospects are all expected to make major impacts on this roster. You can afford to not have a first round pick for one season. I'm, I'm just at the point where 
anytime the team gets off to a start like this, I, I feel like it needs to be furthered. And Craig Leopold, he doesn't, he never wants to tank, you know, he yep. never wants to tank. So if you're, if you're in that mode, uh, then, they, then you go for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wants, uh, he wants playoff games, uh, you know, that's extra money for, for him. So they, uh, they need to, you know, they need to make the playoffs. Uh, it's, uh, it's put up or shut up time for sure. There are a couple of other teams that have been linked to the Minnesota wild, at least a little bit. Um, there was a tweet from Anthony DeMarco talking about links between the Minnesota wild and the Philadelphia flyers. And from what DeMarco said, and he, he covers the NHL for the daily face off. So it's not like it's just coming from nobody. He said names that he, that are kind of being linked to the wild right now are Joel Faraby, a uh, 24 year old left wing. He's making 5 million per and Bobby Brink who is 23 and is making 1.5 million over each year over the next two years. And then as a restricted free agent in 2026, 2027, that would be an interesting route to go. I think too. now, maybe not the Fairby route, but in the case of Bobby Brink, it's another, another in, <laughs> it's another instance of maybe trying to get a young player who hasn't carved out a role yet and put them into your system and hope that they flourish in Minnesota. Remember last year, uh, <laughs> uh, Torts uh, scratched him, healthy scratched yep. him when he was going to come here, and he had all of his <laughs> all his family. Uh, that was that was tough. I don't; those two have kind of had a you know rough uh, relationship. So you know, it, uh, yeah, that would make sense to you know that there would be some some interest uh, for for Brink. Uh, he was an amazing player at Denver and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, it's, you know, the transition to the program hasn't, you know, hasn't been great for him, but, uh, like you said, you can maybe catch lightning in a bottle or, you know, you know, get, uh, you know, get, get someone into a, uh, a new, a new, new place. And, uh, you know, maybe you can flourish. The other name that's been linked, uh, at least a little bit. I know Judd uh, Zolgad wrote an article about this. Sidney Crosby, because <laughs> the Pittsburgh Penguins are a disaster class this year. They are in dead last in the Metropolitan Division. They're 7 and 16 so far. They're minus 34 in goals. And they've played the most, they've played the most games of anybody in the Eastern Conference at 23. So it doesn't look like that's going to be fixed at all. But here's the problem with that. The problem with Sidney Crosby is that he controls, and I said this, I said this with Isha on um, his last live stream during the, I think the Edmonton game, he controls his own destiny and Pittsburgh is not going to force him to go anywhere. If he wants to go, to go down with the ship, so to speak, that's entirely his right to do at this point in his career. It seems like he's going to do that because why would you sign that extension? It, you know, it just, it seems like he's going to pull Ryan gets and say, you know, I'll, I'm just going to stick. <laughs> I've won my cups and I'm just going to stick with the, the team that, uh, that drafted me. Cause Getzloff had, if you remember, had opportunities to to leave the Ducks, and you know, just said, "I'm I'm not, uh, you know, I'm just gonna stay a Duck and retire." And seems like uh, seems like Crosby's gonna do the same thing, which is, you know, it's just unfortunate to see. You know, he just got a 600 goal, uh, but he seems like he uh, um, just wants to to go down with the with the ship. Uh, you know, I don't know. They have a lot of veterans on that team, too, Malkin and Latang and. Carlson. Uh, it seems like Carlson would be an obvious guy to to move to, but uh, yeah, if Kyle Dubas is, Kyle Dubas has got uh, a tough uh, tough go of things right now. Yeah, it's not looking great in Pittsburgh, even not even remotely. No. Other than uh, Rutger McGrory, oh wait, he's he's not playing. <laughs> um, so I I really don't know. I, I think there will be other teams that will be linked 
to the Minnesota Wild. It's just at this point in the season, unless it's Pittsburgh, unless it's Montreal, unless it's Chicago, or unless it's San Jose, teams really aren't far enough out of it to be tapping out right at this point. And so you've got to wait. You got to wait for the Islanders to fall a little further back before they start to consider making moves. Uh, and the interesting one is the St. Louis blues. Cause I would say maybe that's a team that you can do something with, but now it appears that they're back in because after Boston fired Jim Montgomery, St. Louis fired their coach for the sole purpose that Jim Montgomery was available, which I thought was a really interesting way to phrase that. Well, uh, yeah, the poor <laughs> uh, Bannister, he has to hear from Armstrong that, hey, uh, this guy is a, a lot better coach. Uh, that uh, That's why you're you're gone. Uh, it's what, the shortest stint too? Uh, just, oof, man. And, you know, the injuries with, with that team didn't do them any favors having Robert, you know, Robert Thomas is back, but he was yeah. out for, for a while. So that, that was, that was killer. And Bennington has not played well. Um, so that, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> I don't know what, what his deal is. Yeah. He's just not, not playing great either. So that he's on, he's, he's on the every other year plan, like right. clockwork every other year. He's good. Every other year he's bad. And this year he is real bad. <laughs> so we'll uh, and the St. Louis blues have of course alternated wins and losses over the last five games. So yeah. figure them out. I can't, I, there's no way I can, but we'll keep in We'll keep tabs in the trade market because it, it feels like Bill Guerin's going to do something. Uh, to help ease the burden of Matt Zuccarello uh, being out of the lineup for a few more weeks um, or just to add a little depth to this team. But I do, I've, I've seen some comments lately from people saying, you know, let's not rush into something and throw a wrench into this chemistry that has already been built. Well, and, what what's what's really frustrating to me too is what I'm seeing a lot of uh, is that they need to trade for an enforcer. <laughs> no. we we've been through that. We, how did that did not work with Ryan Reeves? It just did not did not work. It does not need to. We do not need to go down that path again. Nope. No. Those whether it be whether it be Nick Delorier, whether it be Ryan Reeves, whether it be Pat Maroon. Um, although Pat Maroon had, I think, more goals and points than those two did combined in their uh, in their stints in Minnesota, you, you got to have you got to have players that can either be uh, on the shutdown side defensively, which honestly I would not have expected it. But um, as Russo tweeted, Yakov Trenin and Marcus Foligno are amongst the leaders in the entirety of the NHL at uh, expected goals against in five on five play um, this season. So obviously they're doing their job, but you need either guys that can get you goals or guys that can prevent goals from being scored. The only time you need an enforcer is when games, I, I don't know. Like it just, it seems like that type of player is going away and, uh, it's it's just something that I, I don't know. The whole situation was weird. I'm glad Kirill isn't more injured, uh, but like it's just teams just moving on, which is exactly what they should do because they have a big week ahead, which we will talk about as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. 
Prize Picks is the only daily money fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy, which means if a player in your lineup is hurt in the first half, your lineup stays live. You don't have to deal with what I had to deal with a couple of weeks ago when Jordan Mason got hurt literally in the first quarter and was done. That's it. You don't have to worry about that happening to your lineup ever again. So make sure to download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Reminder again, we will have a postcast for you after the game tonight. Uh, Minnesota Wild taking on the Winnipeg Jets this evening. So come hang out after the win or loss, whatever happens, win or lose, we cruise in the postcast. So make sure to join us. Always a lot of fun. All right, Alex, we've got four games this week, starting with the Winnipeg Jets, who continue to pace the Western Conference. They are, uh, they, they have started to accumulate some losses here recently. Uh, seven and three in their last 10 games. They're 17 and four on the season. Uh, 85 goals scored, 51 goals allowed. So they're plus 34 in the goals department. They've got Connor Hellebuck. They've got great scoring, a great power play, great special teams play, great defense. You name it, they've got it. And this is another good test for this Minnesota Wild team to see how they stack up against the rest of the Central. The Wild took the Jets to overtime on the second night of a back-to-back, the first time these two teams matched up, and are one of only three teams to take the Jets to overtime this year. Chicago, Minnesota, and Seattle, the only three teams that have taken the Jets to overtime. Other than that, it's been regulation wins or losses. And the Jets have lost um, three out of their last five. They lost to Tampa Bay and Florida. They lost both ends of that Florida trip. That's rough. Uh, And then they lost to Nashville in their most recent game, 4-1. And it's huge. Huge injury. Um, uh, Dylan Sandberg broke his foot in that game. He Uh-oh. took a he took a, a slap shot from uh, Steven Samkos uh, right to the foot, and it you know broke his foot. So that's a giant hole on their back end. So we'll see Ouch. how they how they re- replace him tonight. Yeah, and it's a Jets team that I mean you've got two double digit goal scorers already Kyle Connor and Mark Shifley Nikolai Ehlers is just about there but this wild team defense and goaltending they have quieted good offenses before and they're certainly capable of doing it again tonight yeah a hundred percent and uh you now the last couple of uh with with Hellebuck, it's kind of, it seems like it's it's a roller coaster, you know. He either is on or he lets in uh, a bunch. Uh, so it'll, it'll be interesting to to see. And he's he's had some some tough games at XL for sure over the last couple of years. Yeah, he's been he has been very uh, hit or miss against the Minnesota Wild over the last few years. Now, last year uh, he was great against the the Wild. He picked up two wins, but. You go back to 2022-2023, he was 1-3 uh, and three with a 3.27 goals against average, 893 save percentage. He gave up 13 goals in the four games. I don't even want to look at his numbers from 2021-2022 because I know he gave up seven in one of the games. He's two. He was 2-1, and one, but he had a 3.78 goals against average. And an 893 save percentage there. He gave up 13 goals in three games. So he's certainly he's certainly susceptible to giving up goals to the Minnesota Wild. Uh, it's it's all going to come down to as it always does. 
the the fewer opportunities you give the Jets on the power play, the better. Well, yeah, their their power play is awesome. You know, Kyle Lethal. Cotter, uh, Mark Scheifele, he's been playing at a whole nother level than uh, than he has. You know, over the past couple of seasons, he's just playing phenomenal. Nino's Nino's playing great for them too. Uh, it's good, good, good for Nino. But uh, yeah, they yeah. Uh, they've really and that trade. Uh, they are, you know, the, uh, Pierre Luc Dubois, uh, to, to LA and them getting Velarde changed so much for them. He's been phenomenal. Yeah. That was, uh, for them to, to get him. That was, that was, that was, that was something else. Uh, um, yeah. So, you know, they, and Josh Morrissey, he's been, you know, uh, phenomenal, you know, back there to Norris, Norris level. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be a challenge. Yes, it will be. Um, so you've got Winnipeg at home tonight, at Buffalo on Wednesday, home against Chicago on Friday, and home against Nashville on Saturday. Uh, the Chicago game is a 1 o'clock, that Black Friday game. And then you play Nashville the next night at home at 7, which is at least, I think that's better for the Wild uh, than it is for the other teams. But it feels like this week... You've got winnable games against Buffalo and Chicago. You've got central division opponents uh, against the Jets and Nashville. So I think the goal is going to be three or more points in those middle two games. And I feel like you have to at least split against Winnipeg and Nashville. Yes, 100%. Especially Nashville. I mean, I know Nashville's had the Wilds, Wilds number over the last couple of years, but they're they're a team that's extremely struggling, and so that 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 could be more of a winnable than than it has in the past. Yeah, and look like looking at the looking at the standings, I talked about the number of goals that Pittsburgh's given up. Nashville's given up sixty five goals, which is surprisingly not the most. Colorado has given up 75 goals already this year in 21 games, but they were on national, they were on national TV the other night against Seattle and they got shut out by Seattle and they, I saw that. That was just, yeah, they didn't, I I don't know. All their lines are discombobulated. Yeah. I don't know why they don't, uh, you know, with them struggling so much, I don't know why they don't try to load up, you know, and put, you know, Stamkos and March so together and, or, you know, uh, O'Reilly, but yeah, they kind of have, yeah, Marcus was on their third line. That made, just makes no sense. Ugh, yeah, I don't know why they're, why they're struggling so much. Well, we'll see. Yes. Split, <laughs> split the, the Winnipeg Nashville at least and three out of four points against Buffalo and Chicago. And we'll call Chicago's it a must win for sure. Yeah. Too. We'll call it a solid week because all told on that three game road trip, five out of six points again. And that's, that's really all you can ask for. And especially with the way that that Calgary game unfolded, feeling pretty fortunate to get a point out of that one, um, considering the circumstances. So we'll see what happens, but thank you as always for tuning in to yet another episode of lockdown wild. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have not already, so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.